well. July 19, 2024 is a date that you're not going to forget. It was known as the day the world stood still, well certainly the IT world anyway, and our dependence on IT and cloud technologies was really shaken to the core. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about the whole CrowdStrike incident, what happened, how it was allowed to happen, what the implications are for the future of security and cloud computing, and what you can do in order to recover uh, if your machines were affected. So stay tuned. This is an important session. begin with a breaking news update on a global IT outage crippling computer systems around the world. It all stemmed from a system update by the tech company CrowdStrike. Many of you may have woken up to this blue screen on some of your laptops. It forced thousands of planes to a ground stop, creating massive lines and delays at train stations as well. And it would appear that that was just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg. Hello everyone, Andy Malone. Welcome to my channel, especially if this is your first visit. Well, on Friday, something happened that affected literally everyone, from hospitals to transportation to banks, financial systems, simply worldwide. A simple update, which normally is deployed through uh, Microsoft Windows, um, wasn't properly tested and ultimately caused a major crash worldwide. And what should have been a simple process has ra basically raised a number of questions, not only about what we rely on every day, we, we become a little bit too reliant on technology. And I know I'm a techie um, and it, it amazes me. People stand around when things crash and they say, OK, what do we do? How do we function? I can't get money out of a cash machine or I can't pay for goods. It really kind of shows our vulnerabilities here. Um, now, what we do know is that it didn't affect home users. So if you've got a home-based kind of PC, the good news is it didn't affect you. Um, the bad news is, though, it did affect millions of businesses around the world, typically Windows 10, Windows 11, and a number of server-based systems. We know that it caused a blue screen. So as you've seen that, it caused a blue screen. And since then, CrowdStrike and Microsoft, thankfully, have released a, uh, an update. Now, it's a manual fix. So the, down, the downside is that we have to manually reboot our Windows machine. And in this video, I'm going to kind of talk you through just a little bit on how to do that and also the process of how to fix it. But the question is, how did this happen? How was it allowed to happen? Normally software, when it's deployed, <coughs> goes through a, a series of checks, uh, quality control checks, um, and this clearly uh, has not been done in this case, or it's not been done correctly. So normally before updates, uh, we call it change management. So normally a change to a piece of software should be signed off uh, and it should be thoroughly tested. So in this situation, something clearly went wrong. Now, what this is, as I said, what this has exposed is a series of clear vulnerabilities on not just how we rely on technology, but also uh, our vulnerabilities in ourselves. And I have to tell you that the number of stories that I've heard about people not being able to make a phone call with their mobile device or take out cash from a cash dispenser or pay for goods and services or even unable to board an aircraft because an IT system was down. How did we manage this without IT? Well, remember, this technology has really only been around for a very short period of time in the big picture. And, you know, we did manage before this. You know, I used to go to phone boxes to make phone calls, for example, um, before the era of mobile phones, before uh, cash machines, we had cash. We had to go to the physical bank, um, you know, paying for goods and services. I remember, you know, those slide machines that we had to um, sign off on every credit card transaction. So there was a way to do things. And perhaps now it's a time to start looking 
uh, at kind of redundant systems. So, you know, over the past few years, and I've been a big advocate for it, for moving technology into the cloud. And, perhaps, you know, I'm often, you know, people say to me, you know, Andy, do I need a backup system? Perhaps now we do. Perhaps now we do need a local backup solution. But what this also brings up is those really worrying kind of, uh, you know, how did something so simple impact the Windows operating system? And as I said, I see the Windows OS as Lego. So if you've ever played with Lego, one of the first things that you create or you have is that green board. So that base board and you basically build everything on top of that. So when you look at many of the underlying components of these operating systems like Windows 10, Windows 11, you have to look at where they came from. They started as Windows NT. And like all good Lego sets, we build on things that we know. And that's essentially what's happened here. Uh, Microsoft, Apple OS, Linux, they all build on top of what we know. So it's going to happen that occasionally there will be a vulnerability that is unforeseen. And this is exactly what's happened in this case. So the final thing, uh, final thought anyway, I want to talk about is how do we fix this issue? Now, at the moment, um, it's a manual fix. Microsoft are talking about uh, an automated fix, and I'm sure this will come out uh, within a very short space of time. But if you're watching this video kind of three months, a year later, then we still have to ask these same questions. Why was this allowed to happen? And this was clearly, uh, it was an automated update that was not checked. So there needs to be or a case where they have to look back at their change management procedure and get that fixed uh, in the future. And of course, they need to thoroughly test it. So just before I show you the fix, uh, if you've enjoyed this article or found it useful, I would love your thoughts down below there. And if you've not subscribed, then bump that subscribe button and come and join my learning community. It's all about learning Microsoft te uh, technologies, good and bad, because ultimately we need to be able to fix problems at the end of the day. Okay, right, let's jump into this uh, section on how to fix uh, this particular issue then. So the CrowdStrike issue, you can find the details here from the CrowdStrike website, a statement from the CEO saying how dreadfully sorry they are, and I'm, I'll bet you they are. Um, essentially, there are a number of uh, articles here that you'll need to look at. So uh, first one is how do I identify impacted hosts? Um, how do I remediate host, which is the one that I'm going to show you here. Um, I'm not using a BitLocker key, but if you have, you will need uh, your backup of your uh, BitLocker key in order to restore. And that could be a potential nightmare for some people, I'm sure. So there is a very good uh, Microsoft article here, uh, which will walk you through and it will talk you through the different ways of uh, doing it. So um, here is the uh, knowledge base article here. It will take you through the whole thing. Uh, so let's have a quick look. Okay, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm logging on to a client machine. And what I'm doing is I'm just going into the advanced startup. I'm just simply doing this on a virtual machine just to demonstrate uh, coming into the advanced startup. So um, having done that, what you will do is you can do this either by pressing the F8 button on your keyboard or which other method is uh, specified by the, uh, your device manufacturer. So once the machine reboots, um, it will come up and it will ask you, do you want to uh, just continue? And that will just try and continue into Windows uh, 10 or 11. Do you want to troubleshoot? Do you want or do you want to just turn off your PC? Obviously, we want to choose the middle option here, which is troubleshoot. Now, you can reset the PC, but in this case, it's not going to fix the problem. So we're going to need to look at the advanced repair options. Here we've got a startup repair. So the startup settings, you can go into a command prompt, um, which is the one that we're going to be looking at. 
sometimes you can uninstall a damaged update you can try and perform a system restore or if you do have a previous image that you've created you can do a system image recovery so i'm going to go into the command prompt here and what this does is it uh, comes in into a very basic mode of uh, windows and i'm simply going to come in here and just put in my credentials just once it boots up and you can see it's now come into a very kind of basic version um, of Windows. And this is a DOS command prompt or a DOS style command prompt. So again, uh, old knowledge, I'm afraid. This is a perfect example of how old knowledge can help you fix a modern issue. Um, so there's no PowerShell here. This is all classic DOS uh, commands, of course. So uh, it says, who am I logging in as? I'm logging in as admin, of course. So I just simply click this and put in my uh, credentials. Um, again, whether you're using Windows 10, Windows 11, it, this may differ slightly, but it's not going to be much difference. Okay, so according to the article, I just simply uh, search for the CrowdStrike directory. Now, in my demo, I've not actually got it here. So when I press enter, it's going to say that it's not here. But if it is here, it will take you to that uh, directory. So once you've got into that directory, uh, you'll need to then run an additional command, which will then reveal the suspect file, um, which is here. Now, once you've located that file, this is the file that we actually need to go ahead and remove. So you simply uh, select the file, locate the file, and then choose the delete command. And you want to essentially delete that. So as I've said, just to review, essentially what you need to do is restart your PC uh, into safe mode with uh, command prompt. And this is important, of course. Uh, and then once you've done that, it's essentially you need to check to see if the machine has that CrowdStrike issue. And the fact that it's blue screened is probably going to be right. So once you've located the folder, what you'll need to then do is you'll need to then go into that directory uh, you'll do a DIR here and you'll then locate uh, that uh, troubling file, which is this one here. And essentially what you want, then want to do is you want to delete that. OK, so once you've deleted this sys file, essentially reboot the machine and you're good to go. Downside is it's a manual process at the moment and it's going to take you quite some time. So there you have it. That's my thoughts on the whole CrowdStrike Microsoft Windows issue. Um, what do you think? I would love to know your thoughts. Get them down below. Um, have you been affected by it? Uh, to what impact? I would love your stories, by the way. All right. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed this episode, bump the subscribe button. Come and join my learning community. Give me a big thumbs up. I do appreciate it. That's it for today. I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.